So as of now, what do we know about forces? Well, one, we know that force is a vector, and that means it has both magnitude as well as direction. And two, we know that forces are very important in everyday life activities, such as walking, driving cars, opening doors, picking up objects, shaking someone's hand. All these activities involve forces. But we really have not defined what a force is in terms of a formula or really in terms of any statement. Now, in this lecture, we're going to define exactly what a force is using Newton's second law of motion. Now, Newton's second law of motion, as we'll see in a second, defines and tells us what a force is and what's its, and what's its relation to things like acceleration and mass is. So let's begin by first remembering what our law of inertia tells us. Law of inertia, or simply Newton's first law, states that an object in motion or an object at rest will remain in motion or at rest unless acted on by a net force. In other words, let's look at the following three systems. In system number one, we have a frictionless table and our box of some unknown mass is sliding at constant uniform velocity along our frictionless tabletop. Now, if no net force acts on our object, our object will remain in motion. It will continue sliding this way with the same velocity. So let's look at system number two. If a net force acts on our object in the same direction as the velocity, the velocity will increase. In other words, the magnitude of our vector, of our velocity vector, will increase. So in other words, if our box is sliding this way and we take our hand, hand and we apply force this way, we will increase, we will change the velocity by increasing it. Likewise, let's look at system number three. Now suppose we apply a net force on our box in the opposite, reverse direction of motion. So even though our object is moving this way, we're going to apply our force this way. So we take our hand and we apply our hand this way. What will happen to our box? Well, our object will slow down. In other words, there will be a change in velocity and the velocity will become less. And that's because our force and our velocity, the motion, is in two different directions. So, what can we conclude from the three systems here? Well, our conclusion is that a net force will cause acceleration. Why? Well, because remember, by definition, acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. And because application of this force and this force changes our velocity, in this case increasing it, and in this case decreasing it, our object is accelerating. In this way, it's accelerating this way, and in this way, and in this system, it's accelerating this way. So it's actually decelerating. So a net force will create either acceleration or deceleration depending on the direction of the force and our motion. Now, let's jump right into Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law of motion states that the acceleration is directly proportional to the net force applied and inversely proportional to our mass of the object, in this case our box. And it's given by the following formula. The net force is equal to mass times acceleration. So our mass is the mass of the object, in this case our box. This summation symbol simply means we're summing all the vectors up and we get our net force on the object. And our acceleration is simply the acceleration of our box. Now, what this formula states is the following. If we apply the force, we change or we increase or decrease the acceleration depending on what the force. And we, we also see that for the same force, if we increase the mass, we decrease acceleration. And likewise, for the, same for, <coughs> for the same force, if we decrease our mass, if, for example, this box becomes lighter, our acceleration will increase. So there's one more important thing I want to point out about net forces before we do a problem using forces. 
So whenever a net force acts at a 90 degree angle to the motion or velocity of our object, this will not affect the magnitude of our velocity, but it will affect our direction of velocity. So let's look at the following example. Suppose we have a ball free falling with some terminal velocity v. And suppose I apply a force that's at a 90 degree angle to our velocity vector. And I keep applying it as my ball changes our direction. So notice that our magnitude of velocity will not change, but what will change is our direction. So our, so our vector will point at a different direction at every given point in time. And if I keep applying this force at a 90 degree angle, my ball will eventually make a circle. And we'll talk more about this when we talk about centripetal acceleration. So let's look at the following example. We want to find what net force is required to bring a 5,000 kilogram truck to rest from a speed or initial speed of 80 kilometers an hour within a distance or displacement of 70 meters. <coughs> so, we're going to solve this problem in two steps. In the first step, we must first convert our kilometers an hour to meters per second. And then we must use the following equation because we're making the assumption that, that, that our acceleration, or actually deceleration in this case, is constant. So, let's first convert 80 kilometers an hour to our meters per second. So we simply multiply by 1,000 meters divided by 3,600 seconds because remember, there are 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a minute. So 60 times 60 is the bottom and there are 1,000 meters in a kilometer. So the top is 1,000. We multiply these guys out and we get 22.22222 and so on meters per second. So we approximate it to be 22 meters per second. So this is our initial velocity or the magnitude of our initial velocity. So now we're going to use the following formula because our object is moving in a linear pathway, linear fashion with a uniform acceleration. So we, <coughs> we can apply the following uh, formula because we know our initial velocity, we know our final velocity, and we know our displacement. Displacement is simply 70 meters, initial is 22 meters per second, and final, well the final is the truck stops. So the final is simply zero. So I plug those values in, zero squared equals 22 squared minus 2a, because our acceleration is actually deceleration, it points in the opposite direction to our um, motion. Uh, the 2 comes from the formula and the d comes from our displacement 70 meters. So I, I square 22 and I get 484. I bring over the 2 times 70 which is 140 and I get a equals 484 divided by 140 gives me out 3.46 meters per second second. So this is my acceleration, my constant acceleration that's required to stop my truck within this distance, 70 meters, from an initial velocity or speed of 80 kilometers an hour. So to find the force required, I have to use the following formula, my formula, F equals MA. So I plug in 5,000 kgs and I plug in 3.46 meters per second second and I get approximately 17,300 newtons. So this is the force that's required to stop my truck when my truck is traveling with initial velocity or speed of 80 kilometers an hour and it travels or it stops throughout a distance of 70 meters.